Project finance is one of the most important chapters in the energy security debate. Project finance is the implementation actually of actual investment projects. And the energy industry is highly complex. It's complex because it's a highly capital intensive sector and involves a complex chain from upstream, which includes research, exploration, production, midstream, conversion, refining, but also transport, as you remember, important in natural gas, for example. And then downstream, which is actually distribution and actual markets. Sometimes the payback periods for an investment project may last from 5 to 20 years. So you can understand a number of revenue risks which occur. And even when the price rises, the marginal costs still increase. And that's why the profitability decreases. In other words, now oil priced at about $100 per barrel. And some time ago, it uh, was only 25. You could say that the profitability is much higher, but actually not. The costs also risen, and that's why the profitability decreased. And as you can understand, the economic interdependency signifies that with the oil price increase, the price for equipment, the price for all services also rise. So the access to finance is extremely important in the energy issue. And the access to finance can be provided either via stock exchange when the company sells, for example, its own assets, or through loans when financial sector provides credits to the companies. And then after that, we see an investment process when actually the actual expenses are cured. Why? In order to get to the markets, right? In order to create a level of profitability. But what is very important is that capitalization takes into account profitability of the reserves. But profitability of reserves depends on the markets. Higher the energy price is, more reserves we have. And on the contrary, when the price is low, the companies can not consider that they have profitable reserves. As an example, following a shale gas revolution in the United States, a number of companies said that they don't have reserves anymore because of the collapse of the natural gas price in the United States. Here, a Hubbard curve, a curve which shows a development of oil or gas field from the very start, when it was actually discovered, to its depletion. And you see the red curve, which connects the start with the depletion, with, at the very top bottom, a peak period. But let's consider the marginal cost curve, which at the beginning declines, but then at some point starts to rise, and hence has a G shape. And with the rise of the marginal costs, you can create a situation where the production of the reserve is not profitable anymore, and so there might be this blue star, a point of non-profitability.
So you can imagine that a value chain in energy involves a number of risks. And these risks can be related to possible failures or losses during the economic activity. And each of the chain, upstream, midstream, or downstream, involve their specific risks. Risks are proportional with the length of the project activity. Most of the companies, energy companies, account 10% for discount rate in order to take into consideration the risks. But risks can also engender the costs which are not uncounted. For example, the transaction costs. So these costs which are engendered by a relation with the government when the governments interfere in the industry or in relation with other companies or in any other activity like for example in relation with the environmental groups. Risks can be various. They can be economic, they can be political, they can be legal or regulatory they can be technical and environmental. As an example, remember oil spill, which happened in Mexican Gulf within one of the production facilities of BP. So what are then the specificities of energy project implementation? Important is that declaring that you have reserves is not always enough. Changes in profitable reserves can occur with the price volatility. It's a little bit like considering the fish which would be in the lake or in the supermarket. What you can account is the fish, which is in the supermarket. So energy companies are dependent on the short-term price dynamics, but they have to pursue long-term investments. And that's the main dilemma of the energy project implementation. In addition to this, energy projects, energy investments, especially in fossil fuels, generate externalities, which include environmental externalities, pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, and somehow it can be either taxed or integrated into the price and costs. And the last but not least, energy is highly strategic area. And therefore, it often receives the pressure from the government. And not only in oil producing petro states. Pressure from governments can be also in the OECD countries. For example, environmental issues or issues of transparency, but also competition when <coughs> a state or a number of states, or like the European Commission in the case of the European Union, force the competition and um, basically restrict the economic activity of the companies. So <coughs> energy investments and project finance are the key issues in making successful an investment into energy security. <coughs> the key element without which we cannot consider any successful implementation of infrastructural projects. And as, as has been mentioned before, infrastructures are the key elements for the security. But what do you need in order to have this infrastructure? You need to have a stable market, you need to have profitable reserves, and you need to have a fair price. 
But again, the issue of price remains quite complex in the energy sector. But in this slide, in this respect, I would like to draw your attention to a discussion on the project finance by a representative of the industry analyst. Because finally, these people face the issue of project finance on mostly daily basis. So let's have a view by a practitioner. 